Praise the Lord. Peace and greetings to you all once again in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. It is I, Brother Clinton, and you're back on the Word Prophet Channel, a Christian ministry dedicated to the purpose of teaching the Word of God to the people in the churches of God so that we can go back to serving God in spirit and in truth as our Lord Jesus Christ commanded. What exactly is a baptismal formula? Baptismal formula. And I do this air quote thing because there's no such thing written in the Bible as a baptismal formula, but a lot of church people say this. It's, it's part of the vocabulary of most people that profess to be Christians because they belong to a denomination, which means that they don't have God because they have a different doctrine than the doctrine of Christ. So they have to denominate themselves. They have to invent a different name than the name of Jesus Christ. They can't be called by his name because they're not his. So they have to make up another name. And so in these denominational churches, they have this phrase, baptismal formula. It's a theological term that has absolutely nothing to do with anything that's written in the Bible. But according to the Bible, Jesus Christ, our Lord, came and died and was buried. And three days later, he rose from the dead by the power of God, showed himself to his disciples for 40 days after his resurrection gave them commandments by the Holy Ghost, ascended into heaven, and then ten days later, he poured out his Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, 50 days after his resurrection. And that's the day that the New Testament began, because God said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. And that's when that happened on the day of Pentecost. Or I should say, that's when that began to happen, on the day of Pentecost. And so on that day, the apostles whom Jesus had chosen began to preach, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, they said, and to your children, and to all those that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. You see, that was what the apostles began to preach on the day that the New Testament began. It's very simple. When they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? The apostles told them what to do. There is no baptismal formula. It is written in the scripture, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So how are we saved? We call upon the name of the Lord in baptism, just like Ananias said when he was sent to Saul, who was later on called Paul. He said, and now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins calling on the name of the Lord. That's how we call upon the name of the Lord, to wash away our sins, in baptism, by being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Now before that, before Jesus Christ had ascended into heaven, he gave commandment unto those same men, and he told them, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. This is what's written in the end of the Gospel of Cor according to Matthew. And so ten days later, that's exactly what they did. They began to tell people to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. That's the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So there's no baptismal formula. There is no such thing as a baptismal formula. If you want to be a Christian then you need to be baptized into Jesus Christ. That's how you become a Christian. Jesus said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. It's really just that simple. So there's no such thing as a baptismal formula. That belongs to the liturgy and the theology of the lost people and the denominations who don't know God and they don't have his word abiding in them. But for those of us who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and we have his word abiding in us, the gospel is really very simple. If we want to be saved, we repent and are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. We receive of his spirit. So we're washed from our past sins and we have Christ in us, leading us so that we don't walk in sin anymore. And so we're not sinners anymore. We're Christians. That's what a saint is. It's really just that simple. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear.